video is going to look into filtration. And filtration is a concept you're probably familiar with. If you've participated, like in the environmental design project, for example, you're tasked with constructing a filter using sand to remove particles from water as it flows through to treat the water. The concept is similar here, except in geotechnical engineering, we use filters for other purposes besides uh, water treatment. And um, when we talk about filters, usually we're talking about making a coarse grain soil layer that will be up against a finer grain soil layer that will drain water from that finer grain soil without the particles migrating through the coarse grain filter. So the grain size distribution of those two materials is really important for figuring out how to design the filter so that it drains water without allowing particle migration. So the basic idea is illustrated here. You've got the filter particles, which are going to be the larger ones, right? The filter is always going to be having coarser grain size than the base. And the base particle is shown there. That's going to be um, the finer grain material that the the filter is constructed next to that we're trying to drain. So the, the base is just the particle or the grain of the soil being filtered. So you might be wondering, like, when, when do we use these filters? Well, a classic example is that we put filters on the downstream side of the core of earth domes. So here we have uh, an earth dam embankment. There's the reservoir, and all of the head loss is going through this clay core. Um, the clay is often, you know, really pretty weak, and so we buttress it with these granular shell materials. Often that's really big particles. It can be sand, it can be gravel. You know, a lot of the time we have pretty big particles, especially on the outside part. And on the outside part here for uh, erosion protection. So if we just constructed a very coarse shell right up next to the clay core, the water would push those clay particles into the granular shell, and slowly over time, the clay core would erode out, and we would lose stability of the dam. It wouldn't retain its water retention properties anymore. So what we do is place a filter layer. As the clay core is being compacted, we crush, usually it's crushed rock, and we uh, will put it right next to the clay core, and the filter will have a grain size that's intermediate between the grain size of the core and the grain size of the granular shell. So it's kind of a transition, right? This filter will hold back the clay core, but it will be adequately permeable. The water will drain out of the clay core into that filter and then into the granular shell. So really, it's kind of a sequence of filters going from the core into the shell. <clears throat> so the filter has to satisfy two objectives. First, it has to prevent migration of the base particles, right? We don't want to lose that base material. So one job of the filter is to hold that material back. You can see it's going to be defined based on the grain size distribution of the filter relative to the base. And uh, it would be more correct if we could figure out the size of the void space in the filter relative to the particle sizes in the base, as the base particles migrate through the void space. Um, but, you know, we don't do that. We base it on the size of the particles of the filter, which is a pretty good proxy for the size of the voids. Um, okay, and then the filter also has to have higher hydraulic conductivity than the base. It wouldn't make any sense to build a filter that is lower permeability than the base, for example, then it wouldn't be a filter at all. It would be a drainage impediment. So based on those two objectives, Carl Terzaghi, the founder of Soil Mechanics, was the first to develop these filter criteria. So first, the D15 size of the filter has to be less than four to five times the D85 size of the base. All right, so it turns out that for the filter, it's really the, the finer part that controls the void space size. So we use the D15 size of the filter. And then we want to filter all those particles. We use a fairly coarse size of the base, the D85 size. And that satisfies objective one. That will result in retention of the base particles. Okay, and then it also has to have a higher hydraulic conductivity than the base. So um, what we do there, what Terzaghi said, was that the D15 size of the 
filter now has to be greater than four to five times the D15 size of the base. So now we're comparing D15s of the two materials and saying the filter has to be adequately coarser than the base in order to actually drain water away from it. So these two criteria basically provide us with a range in which we can design a grain size distribution of the filter for a given base um, grain size distribution curve. So let's look at how this works. Here's a grain size distribution curve for the base. Right? So we do a sieve analysis. Uh, you may have to do a hydrometer if there's a lot of fines. So in order to, like if there's more than 15% fines, you're going to have to do a hydrometer analysis now to design the filter. You don't need the hydrometer to classify the soil, but you might need it to design the filter. So here's the D85 size of the base, and here's the D15 size of the base, right? So D15, D85. Once we have those, we can now make a, um, a range of our filter. So here's this point right there is 4 times D15 of the base. That's that criterion right there. And then um, this point right there is 4 times D85 of the base. Okay, so basically if we're on the left side of this line right there, our filter is going to be too coarse and the base material will migrate through the filter and we'll lose the base material. If the filter is to the right of that line, then um, it's not really going to be adequately permeable relative to the base to, to effectively drain it. So basically what we have is two goalposts. Right? We have that point right there and that point right there, and our filter just has to go through those goalposts. Now, um, Technically, and then what I've done is drawn some almost vertical lines here, right? Because that's that's defining that the goalposts. Technically, you know, I could have drawn the lines like this and like that, and they would still go right through the middle and it would satisfy the filter criterion. The thing is, Terzaghi was assuming that the filter is going to be pretty uniformly graded, right? So filters should be uniformly graded. We don't want to make filters that have gravel, sand, silt, clay in them. Um, just because if you put a hydraulic gradient through a well-graded material, it may actually lose the fines, right? It may not be self-filtering. So you push water through a well-graded material and the clay will migrate away. Um, we want to carefully control the filter, and we do that by making it very uniform. And for that reason, we really only need two goalposts. Um, you can imagine that there could be two other ones up here, maybe, and then your grain size would have to be uniform. But it's just kind of implied by these filter criteria that we're designing a uniformly graded filter. So well-graded filters may suffer internal piping. That's where we lose the fines. All right, now, um, let's go back to this earth dam example. Basically, we're transitioning from a clay core to a granular shell, and we can design a filter that will filter the clay core material and place it right there next to the core and it will be all fine. But then we have to answer the question, will that filter uh, itself go into the granular shell? So in a way, now the granular shell is acting as the filter and the filter is acting as the base, right? So it, it's a little complicated, but the definition of filter and base is, is based on which, which um, particle size is coarser. The coarser one is always the filter and the finer one is always the base. So a so-called filter layer can serve as a filter, but then it can also serve as a base as we continue moving to the right. And it might not be possible to design a single filter that will filter the clay core without migrating into the granular shell. So in those cases, we need graded filters, which just involves placing multiple filter zones. So sometimes multiple filters are needed to span from really fine-grained soils to very coarse-grained soils. And that's what I'm sketching here. These are graded filters. So here's the core, here's the shell, here's filter one. Then um, filter two will basically satisfy the filter criteria for filter one as a base material. And then the shell will satisfy the filter criterion for filter two as a base material. So we do this sort of sequential application of Terzaghi's filter criteria. All right, and this grain size distribution curve is showing that. So here's the core way out here on the fine grain side. Maybe this is all clay and silt. 
Um, so brain size is decreasing as you move from left to right here in accordance with the American Convention. Uh, then we can design, you know, filter one. Maybe I should even draw in the two points here. So that's four times D15, four times D85. And we've designed filter one. And then we look at filter one and we realize, oh, it's too far away from the shell. Filter one is now going to migrate into the shell because the, you know, the D85 size of the shell is too big relative to the D15 size of filter one. So what we'll do now is design a secondary filter where we have these uh, two more goalposts here based on the D15 and D85 size of filter one. And then we will have a second filter that goes through there, and now this filter is good enough relative to the shell. It will filter it. You could you could do this more than twice too. You could have multiple layers of, of filters if you wanted to. Um, all right. The last thing I'll say about this: filters may also be constructed from geotextiles. We've been talking about soil filters made of sand. Um, geotextiles are synthetic. They're woven fabrics or non-woven fabrics. And they can be designed to uh, reject certain particle sizes so that they can be carefully constructed so that the size of the holes in the geosynthetic are a certain size that will allow water through but prevent migration of soil particles. And we do use geosynthetics a lot to control drainage. Uh, a good example might be like drainage layer between soil and a basement wall. Um, care has to be taken to avoid damage the damaging geosynthetic during installation. Right? Usually they come rolled up, you can unroll them, compact soil on top of them. Um, if you damage it, putting a hole through it, uh, then it, it won't serve its filtration purpose very well. Right? Um, I'll also mention that while geosynthetics are used for a wide range of applications in geotechnical engineering, they are not used in earth dams. And the reason is that they're fairly new. Geosynthetics are you know, it's not like they were invented yesterday, but they're relatively new technology. And it's unclear about their longevity. Do they continue to provide adequate filtration properties after 100 years? They're not that old. We don't know that yet. So for earth dams, it's generally considered better to just design soil filters because we know that those soil particles are pretty inert and they're going to stay in.